What's up guys, welcome back. I just was hanging out in the creek um, with my kids down there just a little while ago and I met Ryan here and um, Ryan was uh, telling me about some some insights into his lifestyle here and building out this camper van. I found it really interesting. I thought, hey, this fits perfectly with my the theme of my YouTube video, my YouTube channel. So um, I wanna take you on a tour here. Ryan's gonna give us a tour of his van and stick around guys because Ryan not only makes knives, custom make knives, but he also makes uh, custom lightsabers and we're gonna put some info at the end of the video for you guys to click on and see his uh, see his YouTube channel his Facebook and Instagram how you can get some custom made knives or lightsabers so Ryan you want to give us a quick tour of your van absolutely yeah it's a uh, uh, 2007 40 Econoline uh, e250 I want to make sure I got something a little bit you know big enough that if I ever wanted a trailer I could pull a trailer um, but for right now I just built the inside of this out as a camper um, the, uh, it gets probably about uh, 17 miles to the gallon with everything I've got inside. Um, I tried to keep everything kind of simple and light so that it wouldn't drop my gas mileage significantly. Yeah. Um, One of the questions I'm going to get probably from people, how much how much do you have in this rig total, would you say? Well, let's start with how much did you pay for the van itself, and then how much do you have in it in addition to that? Uh, well, the van, I looked for about, I don't know, four or five months for a good van and in Florida it's really hard to find a good van that hasn't been you know ragged and tore up uh, a lot of people use these for work so uh, I just got tired of looking and uh, I went to a dealer and I, I spent seven thousand dollars on the van it was a little bit more than I wanted to spend but I knew I was getting something good and you know something that wasn't beat up yeah no surprises yeah exactly Hopefully. yeah and I have about uh, two thousand dollars in the build altogether okay nice, um, nice. yeah I did everything myself uh, I built all the cabinets um, yeah I think the most expensive parts were uh, the Jackery that I bought that was about five hundred dollars um, okay. and the Dometic fridge which was again five hundred dollars so okay. it was about mm -hmm. with tax and everything it came out to about twelve hundred dollars just for those two things and your goal is to eventually trans uh, transition to live in this full time but right now you're like kind of half on half off yeah just because it's summertime right now it's almost unbearable to be just outside yeah. in general um, I'm staying at my parents right now. Um, everything that I own is in the van right now. Okay. So, um, I'm, so you, I'm living live, out of it full yeah, time. Yeah, you live like kind of minimally possession wise, but also you're forced outside to experience right, yeah. great outdoors. And that's exactly why I came to Bright Park today. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, um, let's talk about, before we move inside, let's talk about your window coverings here and the privacy that it offers. Okay. How did you rig this up? Because I thought it was kind of interesting how you did this. Uh, well, I actually got this idea from uh, somebody else on YouTube. Um, it was uh, one of Van City Van Life's uh, reviews that he did on somebody else's van. And his wife sewed something with magnets that just kind of like hooked on. I thought it was a really good idea. So um, I found this material at Walmart. It's just a, a comforter, a cheap comforter. And it had this pleating in here. And I got some rare earth magnets from, uh, I think I just got them from Home Depot. And what I did was I, I just you know found one of these little pockets split it stuck a magnet up in there and sewed it back on mm. so everything's held on by a magnet i can take it off throw it back on uh this is just reflectix that i sewed on just to you know if it's cold it'll help kind yeah, of reflect the, uh, the re radiant energy back on me that's awesome and that's all you have them on the back windows as well and yep they're on the backs and the sides and then i have a divider for the uh the grate or the uh the cage yeah yeah yeah, the cockpit up there. Yeah. So talk to us about water. Um, how do you store your water? You know, do you do you? How do you brush your teeth? How do you wash your hands? You know, what what does that look like on a day to day basis for you? Uh, so these are my water tanks. Um, I have altogether. I think these are six gallons a piece. So there's 12 gallons here. Um, I've also got fresh water hanging up there in the stainless steel bottle, and I've got uh, various stainless steel bottles around that I just I keep all my drinking water in. Okay. Um, I am in the process of trying to find something to build a, a Berkey water filter. Nice. Um, I have the filters already. I'm just trying to find the perfect container that I yeah, can use. Yeah. You know, so that um, way you can grab like rainwater. You can grab yeah. I mean, tap I can water grab from anywhere. River water, if I really yeah, wanted to. Um, true. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and just washing your hands and things like that. You just basically do this right here at the entryway. Yep. Yeah. This uh, little valve. I uh, these came from Walmart, and originally they don't come with a valve right here. Uh, okay. I just picked one of these up at the hardware store. It's a uh, a replacement valve for like an igloo cooler yeah and so yeah all i gotta do is just push that little and then you just rotate it out when it's empty and you just move the other one yep. forward very cool yep. all right so uh let's i guess move on inside here and talk about electricity where do you get your electricity from what does uh, that look like 
I have a, uh, a 100 watt solar panel up on okay. the, the uh, roof rack. I wired that down. That kind of follows my my uh, wiring harness down. And I have a 500 watt uh, Jackery right over there. And that runs everything. That runs the fridge. It runs the lights, the fan, charges my computer, my cell phone, everything I need it to do. Cool. And you got a Dometic fridge there. Yep. I kind of researched those to make yeah. sure I got a good one. <laughs> so you've got the power coming in from the roof yep. over in the corner and it comes down. So everything's um, on 12 volt until it hits that inverter and then you've got stuff. So you... Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, let's talk Let's talk potty talk now because <laughs> people are going to ask, <laughs> what, how, how do you do your duties? <laughs> All right. So for my toilet, I just got one of these guys. Uh, these I think they're like $80 on Amazon, which... It's kind of expensive for what it is. Um, I was originally I wanted a bucket, but because I don't have an extended van, it's just a regular van. I was having trouble kind of finding space for a bucket, you know, something that wasn't foldable. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's the toilet. Uh, you just wrap a bag around that and go in that, and then tie it all up when you're done. Nice. That's simple. Yep. Clean. <laughs> well, um, let's. I guess we'll just move on inside here and see. Okay. Um, different storage stuff because people are gonna geek out over that you got yeah. some nets hanging on the wall here for different cargo looking nets yeah those are my uh, I collect figures lightsabers you know all kinds of nerdy stuff and uh, I thought I was gonna use that for food <laughs> it yeah. ended up just being for my my figures um, talk to me about what you do with the ceiling is that Luan that I see on the ceiling uh, this right here is that like stained Luan this is it was just birch paneling that I got from, uh, I think I got it from Lowe's. Okay. And it's very, very thin. Um, you can kind of see yeah, how okay. thick it is right here on this side. And then I just, I cut it to size and stained it myself. Um, yeah, I like that gray stain. Yeah, and I tried to, you know, because I'm a Star Wars fan, I tried to make everything kind of look like the inside of the Millennium Falcon when I designed it. Okay. That's why I got the table right here. That's got the uh, the hollow chest uh, oh, yeah, table yeah. on it. Okay. Um, Star Wars and I wanted to kind of make one. everything look like it was riveted on. That's why I kept the screws exposed and yeah. everything like that. Um, you kind of going with that Star Wars theme as well. Yeah, yeah. Industrial, um, industrial look I wanted. Yeah, I yeah. figured, you know, it's an industrial van. I didn't want it to look like a log cabin on the inside. I thought that was kind of like contradicting. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to keep it looking industrial and simple. And you've got food food for uh, Bubba Fett, and you travel, oh, yeah. and you live with a dog. Yes, I do. And yeah, 60-pound plot hound. <laughs> and maybe we'll show him here in a bit. But yeah. um, His name's Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What kind of challenges does that create, and how do you overcome those challenges? Well, in Florida, it's uh, because he's such a big dog, he pants, and yeah. that just creates more heat, which is another reason why I'm not staying in the van right now. Um, you know, just Florida is just it's so hot and yeah. muggy that, you know, it's it's... Brutal. Makes me uncomfortable, makes him uncomfortable. So, uh, like I said, wintertime, I'll be staying in the van. And then this summer, I'll be traveling out west and I'll be boondocking. Okay. All right, what I want to look at now, Ryan, was um, how you utilize a space underneath your bed. Um, what kind of, do you have like tubs under there? What do you do for storage space? Yeah, so I bought these. Uh, these are just, I think they're like $4 a piece at Home Depot. Okay. And when I built my bed, I built it. I wanted to make sure it was very important for me that I had headroom to sit up. Yeah. So I didn't want to build the bed up too high. And I found these at Home Depot. Um, and I just kind of built the bed around those uh, so that sense. I could uh, I could just slip them in easy. I've got, right now I have seven of these. So they're all all the way under there. Um, they're bungee corded on both sides so they don't slide in and out, you know, because I kept the rubber floor. Yeah, gotcha. And plastic's kind of slippery on that. Um, so you just got like, is that three quarter inch plywood? What is that? Yep, three quarter inch plywood and uh, two by fours is the bed frame. Nice, okay. And you just put a queen mattress, is that what that is on there? Uh, this is actually a, they're, is uh, they're two memory foam toppers. Okay. And because I wanted to, it's a little bit too short for a regular bed. So I had to cut something. Uh, and when I was looking at mattresses, a lot of the memory foam mattresses that are specifically just a mattress, they have a, uh, a plastic cover around them and yeah. in between the mattress and the cover they put like this fiberglass material in and people say you can't really cut that so I just got two four inch toppers and I cut it the length that I needed and then I custom cut the sides so I think it's uh, if I remember correctly it was 45 inches wide which is right in between a, a, uh, like a queen twin and a full. And a full. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Very cool. I think a twin was like 38 inches. And I see you got a lot of stuff kind of up on the on the walls here, like your your um, 
rucksack and all that stuff you know yeah. like, that's the key living in a, in a very minimal space like this it feels like getting stuff up and and utilizing that that wall yeah. space yeah i originally was going to build shelves there but uh you know i, I love my rucksacks yeah um so i've got a bunch of them you know <laughs> and uh so i was like well i'll just i'll stuff everything in the corners um but i've been thinking about building some kind of cabinet here just to make everything kind of easier to store sure what would you do different with this build if you could go back and do it uh i was just adding stuff really i mean yeah. You know, I have everything set up kind of the way I wanted. I took a long time to, you know, kind of design it out in my head of what I really wanted. Um, Just watch a lot of YouTube and yeah, you yeah, I watched a lot and... of YouTube videos. I really liked uh, Chrome's van build from Van City Van Life. Uh, I watched a lot of his videos and the way his van was set up. I knew I wanted something kind of similar to that. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, I, I have different needs than him because he sure. lives in Canada. I live in Florida, so you know. Oh, true, true. Um, so I yeah. wanted, I, you know, there's stuff that I designed that was specifically for me, and, uh, and I see and you yeah. got these uh, very industrial handles here, door handles. Yeah, I got installed. I got those ideas from uh, from Chrome on Van City Van Life. He's got two big ones that go across the whole back. Nice. So I went and found some smaller ones. But okay. well, um, do you have any of your your knives you could show off for us? Uh, yeah, here's one right here. Okay. This one, this is an old one. Um, I made this probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, and I've used it almost every single day. Okay, I can see the um, RPK on the... Yeah, RPK. The uh, yeah, it's just a very simple design. It's like a bushcraft type design. Yeah. Um, full that's, tang handle, it's quarter inch thick. And that's that's the theme of your knives, would you say mostly, is like a bushcraft theme, like survival? Yeah, camp. yeah, I'm very into bushcraft and, you know, rucksacks and camping, hiking. Yeah. Um, which I think so, a, lot of, uh, a lot of my viewers will totally dig that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, very cool. Okay, Ryan, talk to me about your ventilation. I know you kind of uh, retroactively fitted this thing with a with a vent. Um, how did you go about cutting a hole in the roof, and then how do, how do you keep rainwater out of it? Uh, well, what I did was I got the fan itself from uh, Amazon. It's just a fantastic fan. Okay. Um, I think it was around a hundred dollars. I think I can't remember the exact price I paid for it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I just drilled a big hole with a drill bit, drilled that down to the roof, and I uh, used a jigsaw to cut the actual hole out. Um, and then when I set the fan down, I put uh, butyl tape down mm -hmm. in that because the, the roof is kind of corrugated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need the butyl tape to kind of, uh, you know, make it flush and give it a good seal. Yeah. And then over top of that, I used uh, what they call lap sealant. And you can get that from Amazon or you can go to like an RV repair shop and okay. uh, they carry it uh, and that makes it completely waterproof gotcha, um, gotcha. i actually i put a cover on it so that i could use it open you know when, I'm, when it's raining out so the rain doesn't get yeah, inside makes sense. You saw that ventilation. Um, the max air is actually a little bit better because you can it, it comes uh stock to where you can open it up when it's raining and it's it's always covered yeah um but it's also more money you, you know, know you're, you're talking difference. almost 200 dollars versus oh, almost true. you know a little over 100 so gotcha gotcha yeah, very cool. And yeah, have you noticed a big difference in the temperature change, just having that open and the van running and uh, sucking the heat out? Yeah, I don't have it wired up right now. It's one thing on my list of stuff I have, still have to do. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I'm actually looking, I'm trying to figure out what kind of plug I need for, for it to plug into the Jackery. But gotcha. um, yeah, I'm going to do that here in the next couple of days probably. And uh, But just having the vent in, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't feel as stuffy. You yeah, know, you like just have that in, passive ventilation right yeah, now. Yeah, when you're in a vehicle, it, everything kind of feels stuffy. And cool. uh, the vent just kind of, you know, allows everything to breathe a little bit. Nice, I nice. Living one like this, if I didn't have a family, yeah, that that's... depends on my income all the time, yeah, mm -hmm. then I'll be in the doghouse for a month or two. <laughs> all right, one of the things uh, Ryan builds, custom builds, are lightsabers. And I held one in my hand just a few minutes ago, and they are quality. They're um you know not just like plastic junk they are they're made of aluminum talk me through the construction process of these lightsabers that you build all right so uh i actually machine and manufacture uh these ones right here the two thin necks boba be quiet <laughs> <laughs> um i've built all of them uh these come as kits um these are graflex flash tube replicas um flash handles uh if you've ever you know remember the uh, the old 1920 style cameras with the external flash on them yeah uh, that's what the original lightsaber was built off of huh. um, 
And then the uh, the T tracks were actually, I think, old door sliders, uh, like you know, for a, a kitchen drawer. Um, the uh, the bubble card came out of a calculator. Uh, I think this uh, this little electric card right here came from an elevator uh, computer panel from back in like the 50s. Wow. So. Uh, yeah, but yeah, these are the ones I manufacture right here. These are just kits that I put together myself. Um, gotcha. They are as close to, well, these three are as close to uh, screen accurate as possible. This one is just something that I kind of, you know, mash together. Yeah. Um, it's kind of my own little little spin on a lightsaber. Show but, me the uh, different sound effects and stuff once you turn it on, and then let's talk, let's let's look at the LED bulbs okay. um, after that. Yeah, so uh, to turn it on, like I said, this one's not really um, screen accurate or anything. I have a switch on the side here. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. It's not really an accurate sound font. Uh, it's not a Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber. It's a Luke Skywalker lightsaber, but uh, I, I just like that quote. So. Awesome. So the LED is... Yeah, and I wish we were this. filming this at night because I know. Yeah, like yeah, like just... I said, the uh, the blade's not that impressive during the day, but see the uh, yeah, yeah, green light, light there. Did you say like D cell batteries? What are they... This actually has a uh, an eighteen six fifty lithium ion battery wow. in it. Um, the uh, the sound card is from uh, Plector Labs. They he's the one that does all the main um, the main sound cards and. Uh, and electronics in the hobby. Um, Goth three designs chassis, uh, sloth furnace cards. All these cards came from sloth furnace. Uh, this one was a Wanawanga. Um, but yeah, other than that, I put them all together. Um, I weathered all of them. I did Very all the work cool. myself. And uh, if someone asked you and uh, paid the price, then you'd be willing to make one for them, right? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't do the Graflex, I leave that yeah. to uh, to somebody else. Um, I do weather the V2, and I uh, I paint these up. This is called the SE. Uh, this is the Luke V2. Um, I'm actually all out of the uh, the V2s at the moment. The, my Generation 4 V2. Um, this is my Generation 2 V2, and the only difference is that pommel cube right there lines up directly with that little set screw. And on this one, it's kind of in between the pommel, pommel cubes. So that's really the only main difference between these two. They both function exactly the same. They both have the exact same internals. Gotcha. So yeah, check out RPK Custom. And what's the website address? Uh, www.rpkcustoms.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at RPK Customs, Facebook at RPK Customs, uh, YouTube RPK Customs. Yeah, and I'll put all of that in the description below. You guys can check it out, click the link, and subscribe to his channel, show him a little bit of support. And uh, thanks so much for giving us a quick tour of your van here. And uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah.